Hello and welcome back. I'm Fulana and on this channel, we talk about life and design. As you know, we laid a strong foundation for industrial design and the design process in the previous videos. We're now free to explore any subcategory that piques our interest. And to kick things off, I've chosen a subject that is super essential for industrial design. And yes, you guessed it right, it is written in the title, today's video is about sketching. But here is the twist, this video isn't a tutorial on how to sketch. Instead, we will dig into different sketching techniques and methods that will help you jazz up your brainstorming sessions and elevate your ideation process. I've chosen these easy yet super effective five methods I repeatedly use in my professional career, which help me to deepen my ideation, find valuable solutions, and craft compelling design stories. After you watch the video, if you want to add any additional technique, you're more than welcome, and please let me know in the comments. Also, if you like the content here, you can always consider subscribing and never miss upcoming videos while supporting the channel. If you're ready, let's do some sketching. When we think about industrial design, one of the very first things that comes to mind is, of course, sketching. By sketching, designers translate the abstract concepts and ideas swirling in their minds into tangible and understandable solutions. The versatility of this tool enables both the rapid exploration and expression of ideas. The appearance of sketches can vary significantly by the chosen method or the individual's unique style. Whether you lean towards simple line sketches or intricate marked renderings, what truly matters though is your ability to effectively convey your ideas while capturing the essence of the concept. That's precisely why, instead of teaching you how to sketch, which I'm sure you can find many good resources, I want to focus more on the sketching techniques that can elevate your design process and ideation. To provide you with a clear understanding of how these methods come together and work in real-world scenarios, I've chosen one of my former designs to sketch step by step. I selected this particular project because there's a really nice balance between complexity and design limitations, resulting in a visually appealing and successful product. Please keep in mind that I will not be doing any real ideation here as the product was designed and manufactured years ago. Instead, I will recreate the ideation process only to showcase these sketching techniques. The decisions made during the original ideation process were influenced by multiple constraints including market and technical limitations, as well as the brand VBL. While we won't delve into those aspects in detail right now, here are some key points that will help you to follow up. This product was a kitchen blender and there were two higher segment blenders above it. The new design needed to fit into its own market segment while adapting VBL elements from the blender category. There cannot be any fancy paints, additional materials like metal or extra parts. The CMF solutions were required using molded colors and finishes. The blender category had a technology called Tilt Tech, which significantly influenced the visual direction tilting the jar to a specific angle. The UI element was limited to a single knob and no additional components were allowed. If all these are clear, bring your pen and papers well, or tablets and sketch with me. Let's start. On the top of our list, there is thumbnail sketching technique. Thumbnail sketches are swift and simplified representations of design ideas primarily used in the early stages of the creative process to capture the essence of concepts. This method is best for brainstorming as it enables generating a multitude of ideas rapidly. Begin by analyzing the brief and using the filtered data from the problem diamond. If you don't know what a problem diamond is, I highly recommend watching the previous video after this one. For the Blender project, you can consider the previous constraints that I just mentioned as our guiding data for our brainstorming session. To keep you on the right path, you can create mood boards. Then you can start sketching and aim to explore numerous ideas leading to a wide range of concepts. With thumbnail sketches, prioritize quick execution. So please aim for quantity over quality. Draw on small scales such as post-it notes to maintain focus on the core concept. Dedicate each sketch to a single idea, whether it's a detail, pattern, function, form silhouette, or proportion exploration. Don't forget, thumbnail sketches are not intended to be polished or finalized. 
it is not the time to showcase advanced drawing skills. So please avoid perfectionism. And also, do not skip ideas and don't overthink. Even if you doubt an idea, still sketch it. This process frees your mind and can lead to unexpected breakthroughs. The simplicity of this technique makes it ideal for workshops involving not only designers but also non-design team members. As everyone can draw the simple, you can easily encourage the whole team to contribute ideas. After brainstorming sessions, you can group similar sketches to identify emerging themes and directions which will be very beneficial before you set your main design direction. Our next method is morphological sketching. This is a method that involves deconstructing complex problems or products into smaller, more manageable components known as morphemes. Each morpheme represents a distinct aspect or feature of the product. The structured approach of this technique encourages going beyond conventional design approaches and the exploration of diverse design alternatives. It can be particularly effective in situations where a design challenge is complex and requires innovative solutions. So begin by identifying the individual parts of the product you are designing. For our blender, the main components would be the body, base, jar, handle, lid, and user interface. For each component, brainstorm and sketch various possible solutions or ideas. Dedicating time solely to one component unlock a wealth of possibilities. Believe me, when you give a day only to think about a handle, you have to find some ideas, but I mean, you better not spend more than one hour for each component. Though. After generating your solutions, evaluate and analyze them based on specific criteria such as functionality, aesthetics, visibility, and user experience. This process helps identify the most promising design solutions. Like thumbnail sketching, aim for quantity over quality. In this session, free yourself from limitations such as budget, manufacturing cost, or mechanical technical details. If a detail is worth adding, you may inspire the whole project team. When you have sketches of various morphemes, you can cross-combine them to create new configurations, expanding the spectrum of design possibilities. While focusing on sketching individual components, you may become detached from the whole, which is necessary for going out of the box. But when you start cross-combining ideas, don't lose sight of the bigger picture. Consider how these selections affect the overall look and feel of the entire product. Whenever you encounter obstacles, feel stuck with your ideation, or don't know where to start, this method can serve as a powerful tool to break through and help you overcome creative blocks. Single page concept sketching is our third method and a crucial step in the design process that transforms those loose and disconnected ideas from the thumbnail and morphological sketching into a concise and compelling representation. This approach distills design concepts to their core elements, promoting clarity and focus throughout the development process. Creating single-page concept sketches is best for driving design decisions and grounding abstract ideas into defined design directions. These sketches also help you translate your vision effectively to your team, clients, and stakeholders. When you start, first create direction mapping based on the project and market parameters to guide you through the process. You can plan for creating two to four design directions that are separated from each other. Remember, we already grouped similar sketches and identified common themes. We also cross-combined some of our morphemes to expand the spectrum of possibilities. Now it is the time to focus on creating the best combinations of these ideas and simplify them into complete design directions on a single page. This time, focus on the quality and incorporate enough details to convey the vision behind the sketched concept. Involve multiple sketches of the concept from various angles to explain all sorts of details. You can use inspirational visuals and mood boards to help others imagine your conception. And please avoid adding too many different sketches, text, or visuals. Anything that doesn't contribute to the core of the concept should be eliminated. When you plan your direction at the very beginning, place your design concepts into different ends in your direction mapping to expand the realm of possibilities. One of the fundamental challenges in sketching sessions 
is getting proportion and the scale right. Our fourth method, the block modeling technique, addresses this challenge by involving 3D volumes of the product in the ideation process. The minimum of these volumes is determined by factors such as technology, usability, and ergonomics. Additionally, depending on the project, you may need to follow certain rules as well. In the blended project, for example, it was crucial to follow some proportional guidelines for the diameter of the handle, its length, and the gap between the handle and the body. This ensured the product's functionality, usability, and overall aesthetics. As it's normal to begin ideation with vague and abstract shapes and volumes, when it's time to get more realistic further into development, block modeling is best for ensuring well-balanced proportions and refining the concept. The process starts with basic 3D modeling, whether you all have a reference-based model or need to create one from scratch. Learn all about the technical settlements inside beforehand. Then start modeling basic 3D shapes that represent your components. After you have your model ready, take a screenshot, place several copies on a single page, take print out or send it to your tablet to use as an underlying guideline. Collaboration with the R&D team and engineers is crucial to understanding and influencing inner and the outer structure, if possible. Knowing your limits and constraints will lead to more effective design decisions. So you don't lose time and energy on unrealistic arrangements. And don't overcomplicate your 3D model with a bunch of details which will end up limiting you. Instead, focus on building the basic structure, then move further step by step. I prefer to keep things simple at the beginning and focus on the main volume and proportions. While I make decisions, I redo the 3D modeling and repeat this technique until I'm happy with the overall proportions. Last but not least, let's talk about the orthographic sketching. This method involves using orthographic projections of a design concept from multiple views, technically including front, side, and top angles. After the right proportions and volumes are set in block modeling, this technique allows designer to focus on one specific angle at a time, enabling a deep exploration of ideas unique to that perspective. Orthographic sketches are particularly valuable for iterating various design details and turning concepts into refined and detailed designs. To give an example for the blended project, I needed to find a way to create a collar between the jar and the body as it is a binding element within the category. However, adding new parts was not feasible due to molding costs. So to tackle this issue, I used this technique and by only focusing on this problem, I devised a solution which was extending the inner piece where the jar sits towards the body, angling it outward, somehow resembling a turtleneck. This approach allowed mimicking a color shape with no edit parts and without compromising the molding directions. So start with choosing the specific views you want to work on. Similar to block modeling, lay out multiple copies of the selected view to use as guiding templates. Focus on each orthographic view individually, experimenting with different details, surface treatments, finishes, textures, patterns, and any other design elements you want to explore. Similar to morphological sketching, you can cross-combine different details. After the session, put all your iteration next to each other for easy comparison. While focusing on specific details, don't lose sight of the overall proportions, harmony of the design and your core values. My favorite thing about this method is that we can seamlessly integrate the selected iterations into CAD and continue 3D development by using these 2D sketches as guiding layouts. Additionally, in the context of user interface design, orthographic sketching is incredibly useful for planning the layout of elements such as buttons, slides, graphics, and screen areas. Okay, we're done with all five methods, but there's one last thing I want to add as a bonus, which I believe is so important yet so underestimated. It is the storytelling. During the ideation sessions, it is easy to become too focused on the product's physical form and its details, which may cause losing the connection between the product and its end users. But we all know that design is not only about how the product looks and works, but also about the overall user experience. Incorporating real-life user scenarios into your sketches, such as a person using or holding the design, 
not only forces you to have a holistic approach, but also captures the main user interactions. Similarly, don't forget to think about where the product will be placed, what other elements will surround it, and how will they interact with the product. By creating these concise visual narratives, you do more than just present a design. You tell a story and translate your vision into a format that everyone can understand. The storytelling aspect adds depth to your work while making your concepts more relatable and user-centric. Dear all, I hope that by exploring these sketching techniques, you have unlocked new depths in your ideation process. If you're interested in exploring the Blender project in more depth, I will soon add it on Blender.com, so stay tuned. As we wrap up, I really want to highlight, especially for design students and younger designers, that sketching is not synonymous with designing. It's undoubtedly plays a key role in the field but it is one of the many tools to excel. Simply creating a lot of sketches won't automatically make you a great designer. Instead, a good combination of effort, hard work, and a dedicated focus on enhancing your design process with your design skills is what propels you forward. Think of creativity as a hallway with many doors and sketching along with these methods helps you open new doors, turning every pen stroke into an opportunity. Thank you for joining me on this episode. I hope you found the video helpful and informative. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share it with friends who might also benefit from it. Until we meet again, keep sketching. <laughs> Take care and goodbye.